Good morning, family. Today we enter Holy Week, and we begin Holy Week by entering Jerusalem with Jesus. You know the story, don't you? Of how Jesus rode into the holy city on the back of a donkey while the people waved palm branches and shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! But today is also the day that Jesus began to enter his passion. The word passion comes from the Latin word patior, which means to bear, suffer, or endure. So it's more than his crucifixion on Good Friday. It's all that Jesus took upon himself in order to demonstrate the love of the Father for us. And speaking of Good Friday, please be watching, as my Good Friday video will be available for you on Friday, March 29th, at noon, okay? Well, today, let's take a look at Jesus' passion as we read Mark chapter 15, verses 15 through 22. Here's the context. It's several days after Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Jesus has been betrayed by Judas, and now, in Roman custody, he is facing his death. Hear the word of the Lord. Pontius Pilate had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the courtyard of the palace known as the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole company of soldiers. They dressed him up in a purple robe and twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on him. They saluted him, Hey, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck his head with a stick. They spit on him and knelt before him to honor him. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Simon, a man from Cyrene, Alexander and Rufus's father, was coming in from the countryside. They forced him to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. I have a file where I keep different ideas for sermons that I might want to preach someday. From time to time, I use one of those ideas. One of the ideas in my file is to preach a series of sermons on the little people of the Bible. You know, the nobodies, the wallflowers, the minor characters. I'm talking about all those seemingly insignificant little people who briefly step onto the stage of the drama of Jesus. People who briefly play their parts and then are never heard from again. I'm thinking about the widow who dropped her small coins into the temple offering and was noticed only by Jesus. Or the little boy who offered his few loaves and fish so that Jesus could feed a multitude. Or the Roman centurion who stood at the foot of the cross and proclaimed Jesus as the Son of God. I'm thinking about the people who scarcely rate a couple of verses of Scripture. Those little people, often unnamed, whose lives we know mostly by their reflection in the light of the life of Jesus. I'm thinking about these little people because that describes most of us, doesn't it? Most of us won't even be a footnote when the story of our age is told. We are little people living in little out-of-the-way places. We go about our lives doing the best we can, but nothing too terribly heroic, large, or spectacular. And there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Here's the thing. If Jesus doesn't mean something to the little people, or for the little people, then he doesn't mean much, does he? If the good news is not good news for little people, then it's simply not good news, right? So again and again, some little person steps into the spotlight, and we see ourselves in that person, and we take heart because most of us are just trying to follow Jesus in little, unspectacular ways, aren't we? According to Mark, as Jesus moved towards the cross, the spotlight fell briefly on a man named Simon of Cyrene. He wrote, Simon, a man from Cyrene, Alexander and Rufus's father, was coming in from the countryside. They forced him to carry his cross. We know Simon came from Cyrene, which is in modern-day Libya. We don't know what he was doing 
in the city of Jerusalem on that fateful day when the ill-fated procession passed by him. Not a word is spoken about him after this moment, yet he is remembered by his name simply because on that day, a Roman soldier pointed toward the crowd on the sidewalk and said, You, come here, help this prisoner drag his cross up the hill. Simon is remembered as the one who was pulled out of the crowd to help bear the cross of Jesus. And Jesus told us on several occasions that he would suffer and die. And don't forget that he told us that we must take up our cross and follow him. On some days, and in some parts of the church, we celebrate the saints who, by their lives and their deaths, heroically pointed the way. Now, if it were up to me, I'd make Palm Sunday the feast day of St. Simon of Cyrene, the little man, or maybe a not-so-little man, who got to help Jesus carry his cross. For what it's worth, I would go so far as to argue that Palm Sunday is all about little people. What was the whole triumphal entry thing? It was Jesus entering Jerusalem, acclaimed by the people, the masses of common, everyday, working-class people, as their Messiah and their Deliverer. It was not the traditional grand entrance. It's certainly not the entrance of a king. There were no armies. There were no demonstrations of power. There were no elected officials, no government dignitaries, no people of influence, just cashiers and custodians, farmers and factory workers, maids and mechanics, house painters and toll takers, secretaries, librarians, and window washers, you know, little people. Make no mistake, this was a political parade. It's a, it's a protest march. It's a peasant's procession led by Jesus entering Jerusalem from the east. Armies and dignitaries usually enter Jerusalem from the west. And now, after his sham of a trial, after Jesus was tortured by the Roman soldiers and spat upon by the Sanhedrin, he was marched out of the city to the place of the skull, Golgotha, Calvary. And here among the crowd is another little person, Simon. And he is commanded to carry the cross of the man named Jesus. Carrying the cross was a detestable job. It was punishment. As a rule, people shied away from carrying crosses or touching crosses or even looking at crosses because they were dirty, gross, and disgusting. And for a good Jew, touching a cross would make you unclean, and no one wanted to be unclean on Passover. Now, please understand, the cross was not something that Simon chose, but something given to him, thrust upon him. So what does all this mean? I think we would be wise to view Simon as a parable for some of the days in your life, days when, to your surprise, you are asked to come forward to help bear the cross of Jesus. A pastor friend of mine told me the story of a Jamaican woman in her church who, who used to live in Cuba during the Bay of Pigs crisis back in the 1960s. She had a ticket to get out of Cuba, but she gave it away because God told her that there was a young man who needed it more than she did. And if she didn't help him, no one would. So she gave her ticket to the young man so that he could come to the United States and start a new life. She gave up her shot at a new life so that a stranger could start over. That's just one way of carrying the cross of Jesus. There are many simple, unheralded, seemingly unspectacular, but deeply faithful ways in which some of you step up and take the cross of Jesus. For instance, the woman who, after raising a family of her own, took in infant twins and cared for them because their mother was using drugs. Or that person who took it upon themselves to pay someone's utility bill so that they would have heat in the dead of winter. Or the lady who sacrificed her breakfast to buy breakfast for a homeless person. Or the one who sits by the bedside of a sick or dying saint of or brought food to the family, or cleaned their house, or took someone else's kids to school because mom was just too ill. Or the student who chooses to eat lunch with a classmate who is being bullied or discriminated against for whatever reason. 
Moments like these are opportunities to step up, to step out, and to carry the cross of Jesus. The cross is not always something we choose. It is given to us, and carrying it might make us dirty or unclean. Nevertheless, we are asked to, and expected to carry that cross. You see, the cross is always offered, but sadly, the cross is not always accepted. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad Simon was there on that fateful day. I'm glad that Mark kept Simon's story in his story of Jesus, because if he had not been there, I don't know if I could be here. This week is Holy Week, and we follow Jesus as he goes to his death. And we stand beside him as he stares evil in the face and confronts the principalities and powers of darkness. We peek out from the shadows as he gives his life over to the providence of God. Large matters will be worked out between now and next Sunday. The battle fought on Friday will be huge, cosmic, and eternal. And on the way, a few ordinary, everyday little people get called out of the crowd to be disciples. Common folk like you and me get called upon to help Jesus carry the cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone, the old hymn asks, and the answer is no. From out of the crowd, a few ordinary people are called to bear it before the world with him. And guess what? That's you. Let's pray. God of all comfort, how quickly cries of Hosanna turn to crucify when your son, Jesus, refused to be molded into that which we would have him be. Forgive us, dear Lord, for singing Hosanna as you draw near, yet in our daily lives reveal ourselves no better than those who caused your pain. May this be the song of our hearts as we lay our lives before you. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great or small, help us to live lives that are worthy of you. Famous or known only to a few, help us to walk with you. Forgive us for getting frustrated. Forgive us for losing hope. Help us to use words of peace. Help us to be safe places for those who are scared or apprehensive or unsure. Help us to use words that heal. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, thank you. I really do appreciate you joining me here today, and I, I hope that these words were helpful to you. And if they were, will you like, review, and share this episode? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and to benefit from these devotional thoughts. By the way, if you have a need or prayer request, please leave a message in the comment section, and be assured that I will be praying for you and for your need. Now, this week, your job is to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love. And everyone needs to know that God loves them no matter what, right? And remember, with Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen.